This video gives some more examples and a justification of the chain rule and also includes a handy formula for the derivative of a to the x with respect to x where a is any positive number. In the next example, I want to show using the chain rule that the derivative of 5 to the x is equal to ln 5 times 5 to the x. First, I want to rewrite 5 to the x as e to the ln 5 times x, and I can do that because e to the ln 5 is equal to 5, so e to the ln 5 to the x power is equal to 5 to the x, but e to the ln 5 to the x power using exponent rules is just e to the ln 5 times x. So if I want to take the derivative of 5 to the x, after rewriting it as e to the ln 5 times x, let me think of the inner function as being ln 5 times x, and I'm going to think of the outer function as being e to that power. That's what I want to take the derivative of. So by the chain rule, I can first take the derivative of the outer function. The derivative of e to the power is just e to the power, and I evaluate it at its inner function. But then by the chain rule, I need to take the derivative of the inner function. Well, the derivative of ln5 times x is just the constant coefficient ln5, and that's my derivative. Now I know that e to the ln 5 times x is just 5 to the x. That's what we talked about before. So my final answer is 5 to the x times ln 5, or I guess I can rewrite that in the other order. Notice that there's nothing special about 5 in this example. I could have done this same process with any base, positive base a. So I'm going to write that as a general principle, that the derivative of a to the x with respect to x is equal to ln a times a to the x. This is a fact worth memorizing. I'll use this fact to compute the derivative of this complicated expression, sine of 5x times the square root of 2 to the cosine 5x plus 1. To find dy dx, I'll first use the product rule, since our expression is the product of two other expressions. So dy dx is the first expression times the derivative of the second expression, which I'll go ahead and write using an exponent instead of a square root sign, plus the derivative of the first expression times the second expression. Now I'll need to use the chain rule to evaluate the derivative here. My outermost function is the function that raises everything to the one-half power. So when I take the derivative, I can use the power rule, bring down the one-half, write 2 to the cosine 5x plus 1 to the negative one-half. But then by the chain rule, I'm going to have to multiply by the derivative of the inner function, which is 2 to the cosine 5x plus 1. I'll just carry along the rest of my expression for now. When I want to take the derivative of 2 to the cosine 5x plus 1, I'm going to have to use the chain rule again, thinking of my outer function as being 2 to the power plus 1. So let me copy things down on the next line. Now taking the derivative, the derivative of 1 is just 0, so I'm really just taking the derivative of 2 to the cosine 5x, and by my formula, this is going to be ln of 2 times 2 to the power of cosine 5x, but of course I have to use the chain rule and multiply by that derivative of the inner function here, which is cosine 5x. Again, I'm just going to carry the rest of the expression along with me for the ride for now. Now when taking the derivative of cosine 5x, I think of cosine as the outer function, and 5 times x is the inner function. Similarly down here, sine is the outer function, and 5x is the inner function. So I can complete my work by 
copying a lot of stuff down. And now taking the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine, evaluated at its inner function, times the derivative of the inner function 5x, which is just 5. And I'm going to add to that the derivative of sine of 5x. Well, the derivative of sine is cosine, evaluated on its inner function, times the derivative of the inner function 5x, which is just 5, times the rest of the stuff. I'll do a modest amount of simplification, maybe bring the constants out and combine any terms that I can. And that's the end of that complicated example. In the next example, we'll try to find the derivative of a composition at the value x equals 1 just based on a table of values. So the chain rule says that the derivative of f composed with g is just going to be f prime evaluated at g of x times g prime evaluated at x, but I want to do this whole process at x equals 1, so that's just going to be f prime at g of 1 times g prime of 1. Well, g of 1 is 2, so I really want f prime at 2, and f prime at 2 is 10, and g prime at 1 is negative 5, so my answer is negative 50. I'm not going to give a rigorous proof of the chain rule, but I would like to give a more informal explanation based on the limit definition of derivative. So I'm going to write the derivative of f composed with g evaluated at a point a as the limit as x goes to a of f composed with g of x minus f composed with g of a divided by x minus a. I'll rewrite this slightly and now I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by g of x minus g of a. That doesn't change the value of the expression provided that g of x minus g of a is not zero. That's the detail I'm sweeping under the rug here and why this is not a real proof but just a more informal explanation. Now if I rearrange things and rewrite the limit of the product as the product of the limits, my limit on the right here is just the derivative of g. For the limit on the left, notice that as x goes to a, g of x has to go to g of a, since g is a differentiable and therefore continuous function. So I can rewrite this and letting say u be equal to g of x, I can rewrite this as the limit as u goes to g of a of f of u minus f of g of a over u minus g of a. Now my expression on the left is just another way of writing the derivative of f evaluated at g of a, and I've arrived at the expression for the chain rule. Let me just emphasize again, this is just a pseudo proof. It's not quite airtight because g of x minus g of a might be zero. In this video, we saw some more examples of the chain rule, justification of it, and we saw that the derivative with respect to x of a to the x is equal to ln of a times a to the x.